An ecological system is vulnerable to destruction from the introduction of plants or animals outside that system. For example, when a non-native plant is introduced into a new area, it usually does not have its growth checked by the environment. With unlimited food and no predators, the non-native plant grows exponentially, co quickly covering, killing, and replacing the endemic native plants. Such a plant is the water hyacinth, which has been called the worst aquatic plant in the world. It is native to South America, but is now part of the lakes, rivers, and streams in most of the southern United States. The water hyacinth is said to have been introduced to the United States at, in Louisiana at the World Industrial and Cotton Centennial Exposition of 1884 and 1885. A Floridian went home with water hyacinth plants and later released them into the St. Johns River. From this beginning, water hyacinths now cause problems such as forming impenetrable mats of floating vegetation. These block boat traffic, prevent swimming and fishing, and prevent sunlight and oxygen from getting into the water. Perhaps the worst effect of the water hyacinth is a reduction of biological diversity in water in which it inhabits. 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 Yes. Okay. Guys, this is not made up just for a worksheet. This is real. Water hyacinths are a huge problem, especially on the St. Johns River as well as other rivers um, throughout the southern United States. Okay? I know you are all interested in, in and have studied water hyacinth plants. Okay? If you have not, that is okay. We're going to talk about them today. Thank you. All right? So please make sure you have your calculator on your desk and please make sure that it's turned on. Okay? I'm going to start with number one. Water hyacinths double in six to 18 days. For the purpose of our investigation, please consider that the number of water hyacinths will double in 12 days. Okay, we are making an assumption here that we're saying 12 days just so we have a number that we, we can all use so we're all getting relatively the same answers or exactly the same answers. Okay, also please assume that there's an unlimited food and water, sorry, yeah, food and and that there are no predators. Okay, suppose four water hyacinths were put into the St. John's River. In question five, you're going to make a table to figure out how many water hyacinths were produced from these four at any given time. But right now, what I want you to do is talk in your group, okay, talk in your group and figure out what information in this problem is going to be important in determining th that number. Okay, talk with your group real quick and figure out what important information. You don't have to write it. I'm not going to ask you to write it. I want you to underline it. Please underline it. Okay, what information did you underline? Double in 12 days. Excellent. That is important information. Okay, that's also important information. We'll go ahead and underline that. Starting with four. Right? We're starting with four. Anybody underline any other information? Okay, so of the three things that we underlined, are any of them more important than the others? 
they're all pretty important, right? Now this middle one, it's not like numeric or these two actually are not numeric. So that's just something we're going to have to keep into account. These two being no, numeric are, are definitely going to be part of our actual answers, right? Does that make sense? Okay. <clears throat> so let's put a smiley face here so we don't think we skip that problem because we know if we skip it, we get it wrong, right? Okay. All right. Number two, after four doubling periods, how many days will have elapsed? Be sure to justify each answer. So first of all, it's telling you to justify your answer about how many do after four doubling periods. But second of all, you need to realize that we're justifying every single problem or every single answer in, in this worksheet. And it's not going to say justify every time. Okay. So we're not going to just ever write an answer. First of all, we don't ever do that anyway, do we? Or we shouldn't, right? Okay. So let's just make sure that, that we're all on the same page here and understanding what I mean by justify your answer. So first of all, what are we going to do to find out how many days will have elapsed after four doubling periods? So why do you think it would be 48? So our justification are, is going to be four doubling periods times 12. And why is it times 12? So that's a days in doubling periods. And that's going to equal 48 days. Now, sometimes when we say we're justifying our answer, we have like a whole bunch of sentences and stuff like that. That's not really necessary here because we have our words that go along with our, with our numbers, right? You okay with this? All right. After 96 days, there will have been how many doubling periods? Eight. Okay, so how do you know it's eight? What's your justification? 96 days. And then what? It's the wrong way. Is that better? Divided by 12. And 12 is what? Days and doubling period to give us eight. Eight, we just write eight? Okay. Okay. In sixty days, how many times will the water hyacinth population double? And how do you know that? So 60 days divided by 12, which is the days in the doubling periods, equals 5, 5 what? Um, 5 times. It's asking how many times will it double, right? So is it okay to say five times? Yeah, that answers the question, especially with our justification right here. Okay, what about 120 days? So same kind of thing. So 100, 120 days divided by 12 days in the doubling period, which is 10. 10 times. Any questions so far? Okay. So let's complete the table. Let's make sure this makes sense. Zero days, which is zero doubling periods, because that's the start. We had four water hyacinths for a total of four, right? After 12 days, that's one doubling period. So we had four times two. Why four times two? Because it doubled, right? So that would be four times two to the first power, which is eight. So 24 is two doubling periods. So that'll look like four times two times two, right? In exponential form, that would be 4 times 2 squared. So that would be 
16. Work with your table real quick to complete this. Work with your table group to complete this table. I'll give you a couple minutes or seconds. Does your table look like mine? Yes. I'm sorry, this one's kind of messy. I had to squash a lot of twos in there. Excellent. Amazing. That's a great talent you have. <laughs> okay. Are we okay to go on or do we need to wait a couple more minutes? We're good? Okay. Develop a pattern which you can use to fill in the days and total water hyacinths column. The total water hyacinths will be a formula, quote unquote, which includes the starting number of water hyacinths, the fact that the number is doubling, and the number of times that the number has doubled. So if you know it's days, how did you figure out the doubling period? If you know the days, do so we divide it by 12? So you have two choices here. How could we write this? n over 12, so like n over 12, what else could we put instead? We could write n divided by 12. Either one is fine. I'm more inclined to write it this way just because, uh, I don't know. Yeah, the other one fits better, but this is the way we're used to thinking, okay. So what about the total water hyacinths? How did we get there? Look back up at the table if you want. We just multiplied by 2, that's it? So it's this thing to multiply by 2? So 4 times 2 to what power? Is it? Look at this, 4 times 2 to the n. Oh, n divided by 12. Okay, so n over 12. That's a weird 2, I'm sorry about that. So this is a pretty important formula for us right here, okay? About how many days would it take for there to be more than a billion from the original four? Any ideas how to figure that out? What are we looking for here? I 
after how many days? What are we trying to find? Days. What represents days? days? N. So, how can we find that? I can I can think of three ways right now. One way you don't know how to do yet. So we can't do it that way. That's the way you don't know how to do yet. Mm -hmm. What's the way you guys always want to try first? Guess. guess. Let's guess. Okay. I know N has to be, if I'm trying to get to a billion number of water hyacinths, I know N has to be related to 120. How? Greater than. Okay. So how much greater? A lot bigger. Like a, what? A, what's a lot bigger? 660. So if I say 4 times 2 to the 660 over 12, uh, you can write it out to the side if you want. I'm just writing it on an extra piece of paper. Oh good, my calculator is going to take a long time to turn on. And I have a post-it note on the back. Oh look, it says pretty cool. Awesome. You guys can do it faster because my calculator is still turning on. Anybody get an answer yet? What did you get? Read it to me. Eight seven two. Is that right? So, million, billion, trillion, quadrillion. Is that right? So let's try two, 200. Okay, mine's working now. Four hundred sixteen thousand one hundred twenty-eight. So it needs to be bigger than two hundred and less than six hundred sixty. Three twenty-four. Four times two to the three twenty-four over twelve. Five three six eight seven zero nine one two. So that's halfway there, right? Three twenty-five. Why would you choose to go to three twenty-five when it's half a million? Oh. Five, six, eight, seven, nine, five times ten to the. Did you get this? 5.68795 times E8. Do you know what that means? Times 10 to the 8th. So I need to move this decimal place. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Whoa, not that. Dun, dun. So I'm still at 568 million. Are you guys just, I mean, we've been guessing this whole time, so I don't know why I'm, 329? That's the way you don't know how to do yet. That's what I'm telling you. Three forty. So that's over a billion. Now we need to go down, right? Okay, so where do we want to go? Which one? Oh my gosh.
So here's my question. Why didn't anybody suggest we try 334.5? Three, three, Can you have part of a day? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I don't like that either right now, okay? We can have part of a day, but we're going to stop right here, okay? So let's go here. About how many days would it take for there to be more than a billion? 335, what? Days. And what is my uh, justification? You want this to be my justification? I guess that's fair. There's not really enough room to write all that in that space. I'll say C attached. How many years is that? So it's less than a year. Right? Okay, here's what I need you to think about right, right quick. I told you at the beginning this was real, right? This is not just something that's made up for this problem. I want you to think about the fact that we started with four water hyacinths, and in less than one year, there was over one billion water hyacinths. Do you see how that could be a problem, like for real? <clears throat> Using your form, wait, what's, uh, I told you there was a couple ways that I knew of, and we tried guessing. How else could we have done this? Table? And a table? Wow. Uh huh. Now, is that necessarily easier? Four times two raised to the. X over 12. So I'm looking for one billion right here. I would have to go a long ways, wouldn't I? Okay. All right. Using your formula, how many water hyacinths would there be after three years? So four times two raised to the what? Three sixty-five times three. We can write that. That's fine. Three sixty-five times three over twelve, right? That's what we're wanting to do, right? Isn't that our justification? We're justifying our answer. So I'm filling in the formula with what I'm trying to put in. Pa pardon? We're ignoring them. They are every four years, but one of the three years might have been a leap year. But we're ignoring them. Okay, what'd you get? Yeah, read it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure it's supposed to start with the one. 1.1. 1. 1. So times 10 to the 28th. After three years, there's that many water hyacinths with no predators and unlimited food. That's crazy. Suppose growing conditions for water hyacinths were actually ideal, and instead of doubling every 12 days, they doubled every six days. Rewrite your formula. What's it, what's it look like? The new formula. Oh, it would be n over six. It would be four times two n over, n over six. Using this new formula, how many water hyacinths will there be after three years? Mm. So four times two raised to the three sixty five times three over six.
What'd you get? What'd you get? I'm not writing that. <laughs> you know what it means, right? Times 10 to the 55th power. So I need, after the decimal, I need 55 places. Uh, yikes. Yikes. That is a lot of water hyacinths, isn't it? Okay. Do you think the formula will ac accurately predict the total water hyacinths indefinitely? Or are there environmental conditions wh which might limit it? They would die. So the water hyacinths Whoops. Hi. Oh no, I can't spell hyacinth. They'll die after a certain amount of time. If you're the environmental scientist in charge of reducing the population, what will you try to keep the water hyacinths from completely clogging the water? What will you do? Kill them, okay? Where are they again? Where do the water hyacinths live? In the water. So what else lives in the water? Fish. So if we pollute the water, we're also going to kill the fish. We don't want that. We could, we could create a chemical that's safe for fish, but not safe for water hyacinths. Now, guys, listen to me. That sounds like a made-up thing, but that's definitely real. Where you can make a poison that's poisonous for one thing, but not for everything else. Say it. Okay. So that's something that's, that's actually real that you talk about in ag class, isn't it? Okay. What else could you do? A controlled fire, okay? So, for the record, for the record, I don't know any of the rules. I'm just taking your suggestions as they come. I'm not saying that that would be possible. I'm not saying that creating a poison would be possible. I'm saying these are all the possible things that we're thinking of, which are all, at this point, good ideas because we're not actually having to deal with water hyacinths. Is that fair? Okay, so we need to be writing these down because this is our justification, right? So first of all, the water hyacinths will die eventually. We could try a poison. How do you spell poison? That's a good question. It just looks wrong. Okay, poison to kill the flowers. I'm just going to put flowers instead of water hyacinths. Is that okay? But not fish. What about all the other living things that live in the water? Because it's not just fish, is it? It's the other plant life and stuff that lives in the water, too. So we'd really have to be careful with that kind of poison, wouldn't we? Okay, a controlled fire. Because it'll just, like, be on fire on the surface, right? Is that what she said? Any other suggestions? It, they'll run out of room. Boil the water. I, I'm not going to write that down, okay? We could pull them out, right? There might be a boat that we can send with like a, some sort of skimmer or something to just collect a bunch of them, right? Okay, so pull them up. Any more? Any more suggestions? A canoe? That might take a while. It doesn't say in the problem of water hyacinths, like we could just avoid living in the south. So move away from the south. Yeah, okay. <laughs> move away from the south. Until, slowly they just Until they completely overrun the entire earth. Okay. All right. So this is more of a frowny face suggestion, but we'll put it there anyways. Non-native plants can destroy... An ecosystem. We talked about that at the very beginning, right? Non-endemic animals can do the same. In 1859, 22 rabbits were imported to Australia from Europe. 
The rabbits found a land with plenty of food and no natural predators. Soon there were so many rabbits that they were destroying the island. The island of Australia. In Australia, the rabbit population was doubling every six months. Determine in your group the information above that will be important in determining the number of rabbits at any given time. Same as before. We're going to put a smiley face so we know we didn't skip the question. And then we're going to go and underline the things we think are important. Twenty-two rabbits. Doubling every six months. Plenty of food and no natural predators, right? Again, that's important, but it's not going to take into account into our equation, right? Explain how to calculate the number of years elapsed after four doubling periods. This is not a formula. This is a sentence. Explain how to calculate the number of years elapsed after four doubling periods. This justification is not a formula, it's a sentence. What are you going to write? It took 12 years. 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 How many doubling periods are there in one year? So there are two doubling periods. Out. Get out. Now. Go. In one year. Two doubling periods in one year. What does that tell me? Four doubling periods in two years. Does that answer the question? It does, right? We said there are two doubling periods in one year, so there would be four doubling periods in two years. How many doubling periods will have elapsed after 18 months? So what's your justification? 18 months. Divided by six months, which is a doubling period, right? Equals what? Three what? Okay. How many times has the rabbit population doubled after four years? How many doubling periods in one year? How many doubling periods in one year? <laughs> Two. Two doubling periods in one year times how many years? Four. So doubling periods in one year and then four years equals what? Eight. So eight times. It's doubled eight times in four years. What about 7.5 years? Can we use the same justification? Two doubling periods in one year times 7.5 years would equal 15 times. In, in seven and a half years, the population has doubled 15 times. Yikes. So complete the following table. I'm going to let you do that later. Okay. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 is what I want you to finish. Okay. Any questions? Make sure you are justifying your answer all the way through. Make sure you're labeling your answers if you're being able to justify it with just some um, formulas like this. Uh, do you have any questions on this right this second? If you have any questions as you go, what should you do? Ask. Excellent.